Hey friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. I'm Brandilyn Daly, and today we're talking about my cutting table. It's been a while since I have said that. The whole hey friends thing, especially like this. I've done quite a few videos on my computer recently. You can go watch all of those. I've got a ton of uh, Finita Designer videos that I've just done. I also have recorded, but haven't quite finished or edited um, the a video on PDF Stitcher, so be looking for that at some point. But today, I'm really excited to share with you the cutting table that my husband made for me. And I'm even more excited to share with you that you can get one yourself. That is, if somebody that loves you, or possibly your own self, um, is willing to do a little woodworking because there are plans for sale. And not just for the cutting table, also for the ultra short throw projector. So we will get to all that in just a minute. I wanna tell you that I am wearing as my shirt a uh, Patterns for Pirate favorite tee. Obviously the V-neck with the um, curved bottom. And that link will be in my description box. It's not an affiliate link. I don't have any affiliates with them. But my bottoms, whoop, you'll see them more in a minute, are jeans that I made my own self. Ha! Huh, that has been on my to sew list for a very long time. And I finally did it because I am part of Love Notion's testing team, which means the link in the description box will be an affiliate. Um, and they just came out with this new Legato jeans pattern. I'm so in love with it because I was so afraid to make a pair of jeans for myself and I should not have been. This was not difficult. Now, there were quite a few steps I had to go through to get the fit right. That's not a problem of the pattern. That is a problem of most patterns are not drafted for my particular body, um, but I was able to get it done. And so I'll probably do a little bit of a review on these pants um, on Instagram. So go check that out and check out the link in the description if you would like to make your own pants. Um, the shirt fabric came from Serge Fabric Shop. It's a linen blend and the uh, jeans fabric is a seven for all mankind um, that I got at Kelly Fabrics. And so I'll put lots of links in the description box. Go check those out if you're interested in making them for yourself. Now, let's talk about my cutting table. Now, if you have seen any video older than this one, you've likely seen my old cutting table, at least if it wasn't a computer-based one. Um, this is the new one. I um, will put up in a little card up here where I did a tour of my craft room a while ago and you can see how I had the old one set up. But I'm gonna show you this new one. The really awesome thing about this and the thing that has improved it the most for projector sewing is this right here, this extension. It's kind of like a drop leaf. It is a drop leaf. It lifts up and these support it. And Robert, my husband, Daily Woodworks, guy who made the patterns, he uh, came up with a way to use a shim to kind of be a wedge here so that the arms can micro adjust and you can make sure that you still have a flat level surface when you are projecting. And that's amazing because we always need that flat level surface when we're projecting, right? He also reinforced the cutting area to make sure it is super strong and it will not bow over time. Um, my old one did bow a little bit towards the end, um, which made calibrating difficult sometimes. Um, I used to stand on it though. So, I mean, to get to what I needed to. So it, it could hold me and this one could definitely hold me up. And this right here is a mount for your ultra short throw projector. And we'll get to that in a minute because those plans are also available. So let's take a little handheld tour. It might be a little shaky, sorry about that. So we've got that extension arm that we just talked about. That is um, like an accessibility bar from um, either Lowe's or Home Depot. We bought it a long time ago and used it on my old cart and just moved it on this one. And it is just a handle for me to be able to pull it and move it around because it's on casters. Because it's on casters. Now these are locking casters and they're currently locked, um, but all four of them swivel, which is an improvement over my last one, both the locking and the swiveling. So. It's really easy to move when I need to. It's also got this just really nice detail that Robert um, very kindly added so that it looked really nice. And he painted it with a very durable paint um, that hopefully will be able to withstand the 
four-year-olds that's now five in my life. We also moved the drawer pulls from my old one uh, because I just really loved this like eclectic red look. Um, so let's look at the top drawer. These drawers move so much smoother than my old one, um, but that is just due to age. The old the old drawers moves pretty smoothly when they started. Um, this drawer can actually come out just a little bit further, except uh, it gets blocked by my um, frame here. They are in full extension, but they do come out a bit further than I am able to do right this second. So this top drawer is generally full of paper crafting stuff for me. I don't do a ton of scrapbooking, but I do end up making, you know, cards and, and things like that. Um, and then I've got some rulers and because I couldn't find a better place to put it, a button hole button marking thing. Um, I also have some of my paper rulers and a lot of the stuff in here I also use for pattern drafting for that tiny bit of time that I was doing some pattern drafting. I really need to get back into that because drafting my own clothes was kind of the goal and I never really reached it. Um, which is why I've got some poster board, which this drawer did shrink a little bit from the old design and so that poster board does not quite fit anymore. But it's okay, these are still really huge drawers that really fit a ton of stuff. This one has got kind of some projects in process kind of a thing, um, some quilting projects in process. Quilting is something I really love to do, but I kind of do in spurts and so I like having a place that I can keep these things and come back to it um, later. And then I've also got some gloves in there um, for safety while using a rotary cutter if you are a small child or a klutzy adult. And then this bottom drawer um, has all of my rulers and all of my measuring devices and that little guy that's supposed to be handy on top of your ruler but I always forget to use. This stuff which goes on the bottom of rulers, some extra cutting mats that are all very small and um, some uh, power mesh and power net because um, I end up using those on leggings and just all sorts of things randomly and so it's nice to have that handy when I'm cutting if I decide that that's what I want to add and then underneath we have three I'm just gonna show you on the edge here pass through um, cubbies so these boxes, which I got on Amazon, and I will put a link in the description box, um, perfectly fit in these cubbies. And I keep things like, that's got all my ironing and pressing stuff in it. That's got all my audio visual stuff in it. That's got bra making supplies in it because that is going to be a new project I'm going to jump into soon. Um, and then there's other crafting and stuff um, on the other side. And before there was a bar down the center so I could only access these three on this side and I'd have to go to the other side for the other three. Now, it does pass all the way through so I can access these box from this side but because we put this extension on here and because I knew I had this sitting here, I asked Robert to make it a pass through so that I could access the stuff on this side from the other side. Um, that way, you know, it was it made it easier to grab what I needed. On the previous version, I also had a pegboard here, which was super useful whenever it was first made, but just became a place where my kids would grab stuff I didn't want them to grab, so I was not even using it anymore. Instead, I have these guys from Ikea um, hanging up there holding all of those things. I do think I'm going to add some hooks or maybe some screws over here to hold some of my rulers that I use the most. That might make it really quick and easy to grab them. Um, because my kids are kind of moving past the page stage where they're grabbing everything in sight. But we'll see. We'll see where, where I land on that one. Now, this is made to me height. Let me show you. So this is made to me height. I am sure I have mentioned this before, but I am quite short. I am four foot 11. I, I wanted to make sure that the cutting table was short enough that I could put weight on it as I'm cutting uh, because you do like to put, you know, some weight on it as you go. Um, or if I want to trade out my cutting mat for my pressing board when I'm pressing, sometimes you really need some weight when you're pressing. And so I wanted to be able to do that without it being a huge strain on my body. And I also wanted to be able to cut far across without having to just absolutely be reaching. We made this to the height that I wanted and I it's my hip height um 
And actually, because I've got this really thick um, anti-fatigue mat on it, on the floor right now, this actually ends up being a hair short um, if I stand on the solid floor, it's exactly at my hip. So that was really awesome of my husband. And I don't mind that when I'm standing on the anti-fatigue mat, it's a little bit lower. I actually think that gives me a little bit more advantage when I'm trying to reach across it. So um, Robert has put in his video and in his plans how to measure where you want it to end and where you can make those adjustments to make it fit you. That's something really awesome about a custom piece of furniture, right? You can get it made for you. Kind of like we make our custom clothes for ourselves. So on the top, um, it measures from the piano hinge to this edge, about 28 and a half inches. And from here to here, about uh, 42 and a half inches. And um, obviously that's big enough for your 24 by 36 mat. And you have plenty of room to move it around as you might need to kind of twist it, whatever, depending on your projector. Um, sometimes you have to kind of adjust a little bit because it's easier to move your mat than your projector a lot of times. Um, but that also means that you can get a slightly bigger mat. And I am looking at a 42 by 30 mat. I know that means it will extend a couple inches over the piano hinge um, and it might make these last couple inches not quite so usable. But what I really am after is 28 inches because the biggest piece of fabric that I typically cut is 60 inches wide. And once you fold that and you take into account the selvages and everything, I really only need about 28 inches of cutting depth from here to here to perfectly fit a piece of fabric on my table. And so I um, will eventually invest in that mat that I was just talking about. It's about $70. Um, and I think that will really, really up my game as far as not having to shift and move fabric quite as often whenever I am sewing. In addition to that, you can get a ultra short throw mount and put it on your extension and then that raises your projector up where it definitely covers this entire cutting mat. It can also work with your short throws. That's where mine would go if I ever put it back up and I really need to, and your minis. Um, although, if you're doing those, you may want to do without the extension arm. But personally, I would keep it because you know what else I can do over there? I can put down my rotary cutter because I never put it back in the bucket, even though the bucket is right there. I always set it down on my table. Um, so you can set your rotary cutter down. You can set your ruler down. You can use it so your fabric is not pooling over the edge and pulling everything all wonky on your cutting. You can put your remote down there. I don't have it handy because it's sitting over there by my computer, but you can put your mouse over there so you don't accidentally bump it and move your projection and get really frustrated with yourself. I don't know anybody else who does that. Um, so I think there are a lot of really good uses for that extension arm. And in addition to all of that, as long as you are doing the work to keep it level um, and flat, you can cut across that piano hinge. It just might throw off a little bit and it definitely is gonna be um, important that you keep it as flat as possible. I think we've hit all the features of the cutting table itself. Let's talk about the ultra short throw mounts. So the ultra short throw mount has gone through a couple different iterations. I've got an older, the oldest version sitting here with my 455 attached to it. Um, this is actually the second version. And then the final version is what my uh, 595 is currently attached to. Now this, I only have Epson's available to play with, um, but this will work for any ultra short throw. Um, and Robert has a video showing you how to customize it for those. Um, and I'm actually gonna come out with a video in a few weeks, a few months, we'll see, um, showing me making one of these. Now, I'm not gonna make a cutting table. Um, that is uh, something I probably could do, but would take a lot of time and um, effort that I'm not willing to put into that when I have a Robert who makes things for me. But I wanna show y'all how easy the ultra short throw stand is to make. And that will mean that I have some extras, and so we'll, we'll do something with that. This stand, um, has three feet. Now we started with four feet, um, but we've discovered that three feet is enough. 
and they are adjustable. You can screw them in and out um, in order to change the height of the projector and in order to kind of micro adjust those keystones physically instead of using your little slivers of paper. It also features on the back, these guys, um, I don't know the technical name for any of these things, but when you loosen them, you can lift this up and down and then you tighten it and it stays, even with the heavy projector attached to it. That's why there's two of them and not just one because um, those projectors are quite heavy. And um, this is what your projector is attached to and so that will raise and lower your projector so you can get it exactly the size projection that you want. And we've got triangles here just because those are really strong and that helps hold all of this together, but it also keeps it from being too bulky. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a pretty simple design made all out of plywood and then just these specialty, um, what do you call notions in woodworking? These specialty notions that make sure that this projector um, is super adjustable for you. And so um, Robert will have all of that stuff in the pattern. That's not a pattern, it's a plan. And in his video and all of that stuff. His video on this is gonna be the way a woodworker should make it. My video on this is gonna be like, hey, let's use a jigsaw and a screw gun and do it with somebody who's sort of, I mean, like I can use tools, but um, I don't make things for a living. Also, obviously it's paintable. We haven't painted any of mine, but I would really like to make it the same white that my um, cutting table is. I think that would look really nice. Through the magic of editing, here it is with the projector on it. <laughs> um, so this is the newest version and it's essentially the same. We've got the um, different things drilled. So that you've got your feet and it's got the cutout for the projector to kind of rest against. Again, there's all sorts of information about that in Robert's videos, um, but I just have the projector attached to this one. These guys are slightly different than the ones on the other one, but they work just fine and, in, and functionally they're exactly the same. So yeah, I have not yet calibrated since Robert put the new um, mount in here. So I'll have to recalibrate soon. Um, last time I recalibrated with the old stand, it was 19%. Um, so we'll, we'll see what my new zoom ends up being. And I may end up lowering this a little bit because uh, it, it does feel like it'll be a little bit tall. But you really get a lot of versatility with this mount. You can have it so low that the projector is basically sitting on the platform here, uh, which puts it here. Let's measure. So that would put the lens from your cutting surface about somewhere between 13 and 14 inches. Um, or your razor up. To the highest setting here. Let me just make sure I've got it tight. And now the lens from my cutting surface is about uh, 21 and a half, somewhere between 21 and 22. So there's a big, you know, d versatility difference here. You could have this sitting on a ginormous cutting table and still um, be able to have your projection big enough for you. It leaves you access to your focus lever and also to clean out your, um, uh, what do you call this thing? Filter, filter, yes. You are able to take your um, cover on and off so that you can get to your plugs. All of the plugs are accessible. And obviously you can still replace your bulb. We've got a video on that if you are curious about doing that. So yeah, this stand uh, really ticks all the boxes and we made it as small as we could without compromising um, how functional it could be. 
It is kind of big though. I mean, all these USDs are, are kind of big. So you gotta remember that. Um, it's gonna have to be big enough to hold this giant projector. And we made it where it can hold the 455s and the 595s, um, which, hang on. These 455s are quite tall. So there was, you know, definitely has to be some um, ability to fit all those different things. So this happens to fit really well with my Alex shelves underneath there, which or drawers, which gives me the functionality of still having that. It still fits in basically the same area I had my cutting table in before uh, with the extension out. It will take up about 46 and a half, 47 inches of your uh, floor, but I think it is well worth it to have your cutting table basically self-contained. Um, if you did not have it up against a wall, you would be able to have all of those things um, either in your drawers or in little containers attached to the side. At one time I had this attached to the side of my old one and I was able to put my rotary cutter and things in there until I had children who would hurt themselves because they don't understand danger and sharp and that sort of thing. Um, you can get super fancy with this guy and do some scroll work on it if you uh, have someone who's so inclined to do that. And you, again, uh, you can get fancy with the edge, the end there, and make that as fancy as you want as well. Um, if this was pulled away from the wall, you'd have access to three sides of it. Um, as, or if your cutting mat covered the entire thing to four sides of it. As it is, I have access to two sides and I feel like that's enough, but what I really love now is that if I want to move it away from the wall just while I'm cutting and then put it back when I am done for better functionality in my craft room, I can move it and my projector moves with it. And so I won't have to recalibrate or readjust or any of those things. And the rest of that is, with that guy, it'd be the same way. It's just I wouldn't be able to use my projector with it pulled away from the wall. I'd have to have it in place for that projector to work. With the ultra short throw sitting on it, I can use that projector at any point. So I feel like this really brings the functionality of this table right on up. I am going to uh, close it up and show you what that looks like. Functionally, I can't imagine wanting to have that guy down, but it is very smooth. There's just this little bitty lip um, that I think doesn't look bad at all. It's a drop leaf. If you are familiar with drop leaf tables, that's how they all work. Um, but this enables you to get it through doorways because most of your doorways are not gonna allow for this to come through with that extension up. Um, and also the way that it is made, the top comes off pretty easily. And we actually brought the top in separately from the base of it so that you know, we were able to move it more easily and without the drawers in it. Um, that just made it lighter and easier to move. So I am so thrilled with this new cutting table and I know that you will be too. So check out Robert's channel. It'll be linked in all the places. Check out his plans. Those will definitely be linked in all the places and find somebody who can build this for you because you will not be disappointed. He also did say he builds custom furniture and ships it nationwide. Um, so that is an option. You can order one from him, um, but you will have to go to his website and investigate all the hows and whys and of that. But I am really, really excited about this ultra short throw mount because I know that if you can follow a sewing pattern, you can make one of these. And we're going to do it together soon. But if you already know woodworking, you can go grab yourself the plans for both of these right now and make yourself this. Or if somebody who loves you does woodworking, you can go buy the plans right now and hand them to them and say, hey, here's my Christmas present for this year. Go make that for me. Um, <laughs> maybe you should be a little bit nicer when you ask. So just to show you how you would buy the plans, if you are interested, you can find the link in the description box below to the direct plans, but you can also go to the recreationalwoodworker.com and then click on shop plans either here or here. Um, and this is a list of all the plans Robert has available, but we're gonna show just the pattern projector table, um, the pattern projector cutting table, which is $20.
your woodworker can look through a few pictures over here to see what they're getting themselves into. There's also a description here. Required tools, recommended tools, um, materials and cost to build, and a link to his video that is kind of his overview. And then there is embedded within the plan more in-depth videos on how to build. So you can add that to your cart. You can also see the plans for the ultra short throw. And those are $5 um, and same. You can see the description here um, and then the video. And uh, he includes the shopping list and, and all of the tools and everything you need um, right here in this description and in the plans. And there are, again, pictures where you can see what you um, are, are going to be doing. If instead you do not want to actually build the uh, cutting table yourself or have someone build it for you, you can um, have Robert build it for you. You would go to Daily Woodworks and click on Start Your Project, and you would begin to fill out this um, contact form. And then here you would tell him that you are um, wanting a projector cutting table. He said prices would start at at least $2,300 and then you would add in shipping and finishing and all of those things. So that's not an exact um, quote, but but that kind of gives you a ballpark to, to begin with if you are thinking about having him build one for you. But yeah, this is a really awesome improvement to my sewing room and I am so grateful that I have a husband who, number one, wants to make things for me and has the ability to do it. And number two, was really able to listen to how I use my cutting table and how I use my space and make something that really functions well. Um, and also looks pretty, because form follows function, but it's gotta look pretty too, right? So stay tuned for the Ultra Short Throw video coming out in a couple of weeks. Stay tuned for lots of other sewing and projector sewing content. Um, as I am able to get those videos done. Also, don't forget, <laughs> one of the best ways you can show support for us is to like and share this video and comment on it and also on Robert's videos that are about this. Um, and if somebody's asking about plans for a cutting table or an ultra short throw mount, you can give them the links um, so that they can have the same information you do and make it for themselves. That'd be really great. Thanks guys. Okay, so watching my videos, please like, subscribe, and comment.